I thought I'd put this week's vegan buzz on here for a change. This is a summary of what's been happening in the vegan world, and this one refers to the whole previous month, in fact. Firstly, thanks to Tim Sheaf for doing so amazingly well on Ninja Warrior UK. Apparently, he was the only one of the six contestants to be able to complete this obstacle course, and so was declared the last man standing, which is just fantastic, because here's what people think vegans are, and now this is what they're presented with. So excellent publicity for the cause there. And certainly I do admire what he does an awful lot, but I do sometimes think, Tim, mate, is this not overcomplicating things? A bit? I mean, I'm no expert, but I've got what I call an Occam's razor approach to parkour. I just think of the simplest, cleanest way of getting from A to B, and then in real time, I enact that. And I won't lie and say that I haven't sustained injuries, because I have, of course I have, you know, the odd misstep at the foot of escalators and so on. But for the most part, this is a style that really works for me. So look, difficult maneuver through underground gates, out with a debit card, over the threshold, just keeping it simple, moving into space, you know, so that might be something to think about maybe, Tim, on future uh, contests, because I just, I just see if you go around like this all the time, then you are going to attract looks. There's been a definite theme over the past month about how much of a hard line we should be taking when trying to convert other people over to the vegan way of life. Do non-vegans deserve to live? Should we have an eye for an eye style retribution against people who hurt animals? I hate everyone equally, says Gary Yurofsky with a smile. And needless to say, the backlash against these direct and challenging videos has been considerable. Unsubscriptions, angry commenters, and it's not just the viewers and users of social media who haven't liked it. Twitter themselves suspended the Vegan Revolution's Twitter account a few weeks ago over his very uncompromising tweets about the stark reality of animal cruelty. And the news is in the past week they have reinstated that, which is a relief, because at the time of uploading this video, he has close to 50,000 followers on that thing. So a very loud voice amidst a cacophony of tireless bacon pushing, uh, basically. This is what you get on social media, bacon. It's a fallback when you have nothing to say. For anyone, by the way, who is an omnivore, I'll give you some advice, right? This whole semi-ironic veneration of processed meat is really in the same category as the Keep Calm and franchise, in that we see what you're driving at, but it's not very clever. It's not clever enough to be funny. So contrary to popular belief, this won't cloak a personality deficit. For concealing a lack of character, I favor something along the lines of this. You know, that's a better bet, I think. So in the face of all this um, mournful meat rack pornography, uh, you can see why some people think, oh, for Christ's sake, no one's getting it, are they? And they feel the hardline approach is the only way to go if they're going to penetrate the minds of the gunslinging masses. But if you are a vegan and you find these methods offensive, because a lot of people do, a lot of people don't think they'll work, they'll just alienate others. I think Emily from Bite Size Vegan made an excellent point in her video last week when she said, if you don't like the way other activists are doing it, it's important that you start doing it and you do it in the way that would have converted you. We need every different way of delivering this same message because look at what we're up against. Bacon fucking roses, mate. This has gone viral. I love you so much, have some atherosclerosis, you know, pretty much. It's like a drawn out assault on your lover rather than a celebration of, <laughs> it is though, isn't it? And I take issue even with the concept because um, had I been a meat eater and someone gave me bacon roses, I would just feel they'd missed the fact that I am actually quite a classy chick, <laughs> hopefully. Bacon roses doesn't say that to me. Peter have had quite a big victory this week because within 24 hours of starting their campaign against Benetton, the clothing company, gave in to the pressure and have agreed that they're going to stop using the hair of Angora rabbits. Benetton, you know, outrageously were one of the few companies still using it because a couple of years back, Peter revealed video of how uh, the hair is obtained, it's just ripped out of the animal's skin. I mean, it's just staggering. These uh, rabbits are squealing in agony. They're then thrown back into their cages afterwards, only to have the process repeated every 70 days or so. 60% of them die within one or two years. That's how bad the stress is to their body. It's just too much. So 
thank goodness that Benetton have agreed to stop using this and good on Peter for staging this very well-coordinated campaign to expose the cruel indifference of big business. I think Benetton had no choice but to go back on what they were doing. I really hope that dented their sales a lot because you, you think it won't, you think consumers don't care, but if there's one thing young people have more than previous generations, it's a desire to favor ethical businesses. And you can see that very clearly from the fact a lot of industry is now desperate to pretend it gives a shit. Now, if you read news websites like The Guardian or The Huffington Post, you'll notice a big increase in vegan and vegetarian articles lately. And this trend is definitely continuing. There's a headline on uh, Metro.us this week that asked, is vegan ice cream the future of New York's hipster economy? Very disparaging way to put it, really, you know. They're trying to imply that people who care about their health are all those bearded tank top landroids, because the implication there is this uh, healthy eating thing is being fueled by fashion and not a genuine desire that people have to live, <laughs> you know, not die prematurely. Um, but this article was uh, giving as an example a young company launched in 2012 who started selling two kinds of ice cream, traditional and then the vegan kind, and they very soon realized the dairy-free stuff was selling way faster. And basically, the speciality fair thing is the way to go for entrepreneurs looking to make money in the food industry. So long may this continue, because finally people are taking interest in their health and in the environment as well. Conversely, it was National Cheese Week in Britain last week, which like bacon roses is to my mind pretty much common assault you know it's like uh, oh god overcrowding's a problem how can we increase people's risk of heart attack all you have to do in britain is to say the word cheese to make people buy it because we i don't know what's gone wrong here but we seem to have a cheese named after almost every town in the uk possibly apart from chitterton <laughs> although th we've got a place called figsbury ring which could work as a nice fruit-based wheel of cheese although to be fair doesn't matter how much fruit you add to it, it's still solidified breast milk from a farm animal. But if you were a cheese fan, or if you're a vegetarian still trying to give cheese up, and this is the hardest thing for you to do, vegan cheeses, you've got to give them a shot because I think they're even more convincing than vegan meats are. And cheese slices are exactly the same because they like frankfurter sausages, you know, in the, the original products contain so little cheese or meat in the first place, you can very easily make something similar that's plant-based. Anyway, on the Vegan Buzz's Facebook page, there's an article there that I've linked to 13 cheese recipes for vegans. And while you're there, another one from the Huffington Post, which is 13 vegan ice cream recipes that are better than the real thing. So uh, have a look at that, facebook.com forward slash the vegan buzz. And we're on Twitter at forward slash buzzfeed. The Thai Fruit Festival is currently underway, so hello to everyone watching from Chiang Mai. Even as I speak, a small rain shower has begun outside, so I'm off to close all the windows now. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more of these and tweet me any news you'd like me to include next time at the BuzzVeg account on Twitter. Wise Vegan quote of the week goes to Eddie Peppertone, which it should every week, let's face it. Car ad. It's not just a car, it's the essence of not caring about others. You deserve it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>